Uh, 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 uh. Oh, so what do you want to be known as, bro? Rizzy run it up. Literally. Rizzy yes, run it up. Yes, sir. All right. Do you, are you like, uh, like, would you say you are a, uh, like, what type of artist? Just a rapper, a singer? Uh, I would say, uh, an alternative artist, because I, mm. I jump in everything, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like, I jump in indie music. I've made a, I made pop tracks. Yeah. I made, I'm actually working on R&B right now, Beach House Rock. Like, I write for a lot of people. So yeah. I'm also a songwriter. All right, for sure. Cool. Here we go. You ready? Yes, sir. Hey, yo. It is what it is. Episode of the Harmon War Hall Show, and I have to, a special guest, actually a person that I know but I don't know at all whatsoever, and I'm getting forward to know today. Uh, it's something that's actually, um, I guess, uh, uh, time in the making or making in the time. I don't know, but it's going to be interesting. You're going to be here, be able to hear it. But uh, here I have today an alternative artist. Someone who is a songwriter, who's mixing into a lot of different things, R&B, as he says, we got Ruzi running it up. Hey! What's going on, man? <laughs> I said it right, right? Ruzi? Yes, sir. All right, yeah, because I don't know Ruzi, but I kind of been, you know, peeping game for a little bit on this dude, bro. Uh, how are you doing today, bro? I'm doing pretty good, man. I can't complain. You Life's can't complain? amazing. Really? Life's amazing? Life's amazing. You want to switch? No, <laughs> No. <laughs> I'm just kidding, bro. Um, uh, why is it amazing, bro? Man, just taking care of business, going up, it's the only way to go. Uh, it's like, just got to do doing shows for like a whole month. Oh, really? Nice. So, it's just crazy, working on songs, getting features out the way, working on collab projects, so. How old are you, bro? 22 years old. 22, so yeah, again. So I was telling my dad about you today. Oops, shit, what toy is that? Uh, Marvin the Martian. But anyway, uh, I was telling my dad about you today and uh, just explained it to him. And I was like, yeah, see, I seen this guy. You were at the sanctuary with Steve uh, Steve and all of them was on in that spot. And they did an open mic for a show to come and shit. Right before, this is like right before COVID and shit. Like before, yeah, right. everybody was like doing an open mic show. So we get on a show that never happened and shit. And so I seen you and like, that's why it's so funny seeing you today. So you guys got to think, like, let's just think months before COVID hit. Like this is like fucking January, February or some shit like that or something like that man. and fucking uh, I I fucking came right after work because it was a Thursday so Damn. like I came in like my clothes that I wore that I wear before I go to work because I wear like, I, I like welding shit and fucking uh, so then after my welding job I came over there with my fucking whatever clothes whatever file I had because I didn't know about it till last minute and I was like fuck it I'm gonna do it just fuck it you know what I mean so I didn't even look cool I didn't even have like a whole practice thing going on not making excuses but I was like damn I didn't have the best set but anyway I seen you get up there and everything and I'm like damn this is a young nigga you know what I mean I saw a few people that actually that I actually ended up interviewing and stuff but I remembered you and I was just saying, damn, this is a little young nigga, brother. Mind you, this is like three years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah, what? so you about 19 years old. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, like, I was just like, damn, this nigga's like a young-ass nigga. I didn't really know what to expect, especially seeing you today, bro, because you do not look the same. You know what I mean? <laughs> Definitely three years helped your ass. You almost like, you and Jack Harlow ate the same shit. I don't know what the fuck happened. <laughs> But, uh, Some in the water, man. But Some once I, water. once I heard, it wasn't even just how you performed. It was just the sound of your music. I was like, oh, shit. I like this, you know what I mean? And that's what got me like, oh, cool. And you seem like you was just starting and getting, you know, getting going on it yeah. and everything. And I was just like, that's dope as fuck. So I was like, when I got your information, I saw you. I don't know. I don't remember. It's three years ago. Uh, but anyway, and then seeing you just like, you know, it's so weird to say this, but like seeing you grow, like just on the outside, just every now checking in like, oh, damn, you got a song out. Or like, oh, like, oh, finally you put his shit out. Oh, finally. Then he's like, oh, cool. And then I'm seeing you grow. You get different outfit change and shit and everything. <laughs> I can see when you were trying to 
find yourself and now seeing you here now then you know getting on the show and i'm like all right what's good bro and then actually like delving into your newer shit recently i was just like damn dude, i'm so glad i kept in touch with about this dude bro like this nigga got good sound and shit no shit. You don't remember that? <laughs> All that shit I just said. <laughs> Newer shit, about to go crazy. Yeah. We actually got a collab project out. I know Ro was on an episode probably okay. like a couple, I think like a month ago. I got some stuff coming out with him and my gang. Shout out Deuce. Shout out Vicio. Mm -hmm. Those guys out there, we're working on the collab project right now. We got a song coming out next month called RVD. Mm -hmm. It's on some New York Boom Bap stuff for the old heads. Is that for like Rob Van Dam? Nah, nah, I wish though that man go crazy. Rob, damn, damn. <laughs> you remember that shit? You ever watch wrestling and shit? I used to watch WWE, but I, I sadly wasn't alive during the time he was uh, wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, did, like, what did you watch though? I used to watch like John Cena and shit. Okay, yeah, John Cena's the shit. He's though, like, you bro. can't see me. You still yeah. ain't even wrestling no more. Yeah. And you're like, where's he still at? I don't know. Yeah. Everybody's still doing it. It's so hilarious. I think it's the tight shit. Like, fucking used to rap and fucking wrestle, and now this niggas are making movies and shit. It's, it's just awesome, bro. You're going crazy. Yeah, bro. But, um, so you from Stockton? Yes, sir. Born and raised. Born and raised. All right, for sure. What high school do you go to? I went to McNair Edison High School. Okay. Soul for Bikes. Sure. Okay, that's what's up, bro. So, like, how was it, like, being, like, born and raised in Stockton, bro? Crazy. Why is it crazy, bro? Because it's um one of those things where you either let your city make you or you make somebody yourself so you can influence people to be different and positive in a city. Because we come from a city where you grow up in a wrong area, you end up a part of that environment. Mm -hmm. As in, like, and usually it's not the right part of the environment. Yeah. So, that's, like, my whole thing about it is, I was, like, the whole time growing up, I don't want to be like these guys. So, Why is I kind of... Because they in jail or dead. Yeah, okay, that's why I'm just being specific. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? You just said, like, they got, like, nine baby mamas. Like, or that. They got nine baby mamas. I'd rather be dead than have nine baby mamas. You know Man. <laughs> kid free, everybody. Just be kid walking free. around with with nice Jordans on with a million dollars in debt with child support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just some shit like that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what did, did you always want to do? Music? Be into, like, the pop culture thing? Like, I see yeah. you're kind of, like, you into fashion or you just dress up for me, bro? Uh, <laughs> No, I'm in a, a little bit of fashion. Like, I'm more of, like, styling people. Like, I like styling myself. Yeah. I style other people from time to time. But, um, really, I got into music when I was, like, a little kid. I used to be in a choir at church. Oh, so, so you did used to sing. Yeah. All right, because that's why I was going to ask you about your, like, music and everything, because... Um, I mean, you had a little bit more rapper when I first heard you, and then, like, listen to your last project. Uh, what is it called? Uh, the Send Off. The Send Off. Okay, all right. Uh, what I was going to say is because it's just, like, there's a lot of singing in it. Yeah. But then there is some rapping and shit, but it's just, like, so what would you consider? Are you saying, I'm, hey, hey, no, I'm singing? Or is it, like, because I don't know. Like, do you want to be, like, I am a singer? Because you do rap in there, and there's some, like, okay, that's rapping. <laughs> yeah. But that kind of, there's some, like, there's some singing where it's, like, more singing. Like, oh, that's some singing shit? Or that was, like, is that just, like, some type of melody shit? Or is that intentional? Or you just it's intentional doing it? singing. Okay. Yeah, intentional. Okay. Intentional. I like, um, basically what happened during the whole process of that project, which it took about like, probably about like three, three, four months to mm -hmm. make, like just the recording and writing process. Um, I would listen to beats and what I felt would just come out. So like, yeah, I yeah. just, I talked to a cool amount of chicks like yeah. back then. So like, I was basically writing about each shit. Like yeah, each, yeah, yeah. Each that's song all I'm about except, to say, yeah. yeah. But so I was like, damn, you young, like you young as fuck, you know what I'm saying? And you got these motherfucking like songs about girls, like deep yeah. relationships, and like it's not like the regular shit, like fucking a bitch or da 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 da. Like you, like you really got like actually concepts and you stick to them, you know what I mean? In these pockets, so I'm just like, okay, it's 22. I'm like, so you really be, yeah, you got you, you got you. Yeah. We outside. <laughs> baby. Do your thing, bro. Do your thing, bro. How, so, like, uh, you've always been, like... Because, I mean, I used to be quite the lady man, my, ladies' man myself back I'm then. I'm already knowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I was just saying, uh, 
What, it was just, you were young. I mean, you doing that shit during COVID, nigga. Like, yeah, bro, you out here, bro. <laughs> niggas, niggas ain't just worried about catching AIDS. Yeah, they're right they're like, COVID. <laughs> In between the sheets. He's like, bitch, you just gave me COVID? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could have got me gonorrhea, but it's like, COVID, I can't go to work, bitch. I can go to work with gonorrhea. I can't go to work with COVID. <laughs> Uh, you better hope these niggas cover this shit, bitch. <laughs> Man, I just literally wrote like about each relationship, except Kitty's the Lord. I was like a concept. I was just happy that night. I wrote it was like three in the morning. I heard the beat and I came up with a hook right away. Like I came up with a melody for it, and then right after that, I was like, like it's it's almost as if it came out the if Shorty got a kitty, I'm gonna have to hit it out of the park. Yes, and that's is. when I. I was like, oh, shit. And I hung up. I was talking to my little sister. So I was like, I got to call you back, sis. Mm -hmm. I hung up, wrote that real quick, and I just started, I kept playing, and I kept repeating that over and over again. And then out of nowhere, that's when the rest of it came. Mm -hmm. So it was cool. I, uh, when I made that song specifically, I had my boy De Niro Den. Shout out De Niro Den. Hey. He just dropped De Niro Season not too long ago. It's fire. But anyway, he, he happened to be in the studio. My boy Deuce was invited, and I had him hop on the verse. Mm -hmm. And we made Kitties Galore. So, like, what else? And, like, so you said to me earlier, like, you recently just got into music like that. I I used to make music. But not and seriously. I, I wanted to make it in music, but I feel like you don't necessarily really, truly find it passionate or you don't have a passion for it until you really push and do it. Like, mm -hmm. you really outside pushing and doing it. You doing stuff all the time. You recording. You either writing songs all the time or whatever you got to do to get that work in. I feel like two, three years ago, I wasn't necessarily putting the work in enough. And then the day I did the open mic, honestly, like, it was on some, like, I didn't know if I wanted to even do that. But I was like, you know what? You got to get out there and go do it. So that's when I went out and did that, which is the first time I ever... I yeah. openly performed yeah. besides choir, so, and I, I ain't did choir since I was like six, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it was more of like, this is your time to like really make something about yourself and start doing stuff, and then COVID happened. So then what else were you doing then before then, like during like your school, like teen years and shit, were you just, like you played sports or nothing? I played like, basketball, okay. I hooped, I played uh -huh. football for like two months, yeah, and yeah. I said, fuck this shit. Yeah. <laughs> Why? It was just... I ain't got the footwork for the grass, man. Yeah, it's just something yeah. about the grass and you cleats. Gotta glide. Um, you gotta glide. Yeah. You can't have that rough. I like to dig in. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, getting tackled wasn't a problem. I was, I was always getting tackled. Yeah, but yeah. the whole running and nah, it yeah, wasn't yeah, for me. Yeah, like grass. grass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. From a court to a grass is totally different type movements man. and footwork and shit for real. Yeah. I used to hoop a lot though, and I just, I think, um, what made me really start pursuing music though like recording and stuff and putting music out was when i was like 15. my mom told me i couldn't play for the sophomore team because i didn't have a 3.0 i had a 2.7 mm. so she was like she called my grandpa because i lived with my grandpa at the time and she was like nah don't let him play and this yeah. was the year i tried out for varsity and they were trying to let me play with them on that like third string type shit for that year and i uh couldn't play so until I start fucking with my boy Ritzy, who he, he goes by RH, and I start recording shit. I was engineering shit in his garage and recording. So and now I'm here today. That's what's up, bro. So it's just okay, damn, bro. So that's what's up. But it's just because you're so young. I keep telling these people, anyone who's like 24 or younger, I'm just like, you're so young, bro. You know, it's just like. I feel like that old nigga, but like for real, like it's just so cool to see where you're gonna be going next and what you're gonna be doing, bro. Cause like I said, bro, like from I could tell, like I was like, damn, like it's so crazy. I was there and see, cause you even said like that was my first time ever, da, da, da. Yeah. and I'm like, and I uh, and I could even kind of tell, and I was just like, oh, look at this little nigga, da, 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 da. and then I'm like seeing you, then like and I, like I said, I could tell you were like it's something new to you. And when I hear the music, I'm like, oh, this is pretty good though, bro. Like you know what I mean? And yeah. I'm like, damn, for such a young dude making some like quality music, I'm like, oh, cool, this would be cool to see. What's up on? And I was right, nigga. Just letting everybody know. <laughs> uh, what's uh, what's like? What do we? So is women like your like greatest muse? You're like out of nowhere, huh? You're like, yeah, uh, I thought. Nah, we nah, nah. Cool, it's cool. 
I love women. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, women yeah. are amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what What's the thing that feminists say? What women? Women power, whatever. Shit, I love that empowerment. Come empower me. But anyway, I don't think that's. Like, I don't think that's how. I don't think that's how it went. I don't think that's how it went either. But just kidding. I'm just saying it could come my way. But shall they swing my way? Shall look good in me? Now would you please swing my way? You know that song? I do. Swing I'm, over here, I'm shawty. over here. I'm over here oh, listening dude, to the beat in my head yeah, and shit. Yeah, that shit, baby, was hard. Bro. Man, it's, anybody What's, that has a mom that used to clean or a, a stepmom that used yeah. to clean, if they wasn't slapping that R and B or something in the, back yeah, in the yeah. man. Yeah, used to go man. crazy. Yeah, hey, don't you want to just make music that niggas can't... Like, you're like, I want to make music for the club. I want car music, nigga. I'm like, nigga, when you really think about it, every time I hear a nigga or a rapper or something, like, hey, yo, so the music that I listen to is what my moms and my pops was listening to when they clean and shit. You're like, nigga, why don't we make music to clean to, nigga? Like, like I want my fucking music to make niggas clean. I want niggas to... Why don't they hear my shit? They just want to pull out a vacuum, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just started vacuuming and grooving, shaking that ass. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, damn, bro. Like, that's the move, bro. <laughs> Honestly, oh, go, go, oh my go. bad. Go, go. Honestly, it's crazy because when I was making the songs, like, I had no intention of saying, like, oh, this is going to be a club banger or this is, like, I just was making music mm -hmm. and I, like, made a collection of songs and put them in a specific order to let it be a story and, like, Sometimes I get a feeling when I listen to the songs, like, it's more of, like, uh, kind of, oh, this song could be played out of cookout. Like, for example, Kid Is Law is one of my favorite songs all time that I mm. ever recorded. And I'm like, damn, this would go hard at a barbecue house. All the yeah, aunties grooving yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, Assumptions could be played at the club. And it's like, Gemini Hearts could be played out of Rave or some, some shit, some weird little pop. White people bullshit. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's for surely some songs on there that I feel like can be played in different areas. Two questions. Uh, yes, one, uh, who are your musical influences, new or old? And then also, when you're uh, creating a song, like what is like the beginning of that? Like, like you know, are you starting on the hook first? Or are you you know? Go ahead and tell me that. So, so favorite okay. artists, and then how, how you make songs? Because that that's kind of goes together. Because to me. I mean, some of the artists that I listen to kind of help develop my writing style, you know what I mean? And yeah. going into how I approach a song. So for me, it's more like, for more of that Gemini-ish, like, two-faced, two like, bipolar. Nah, nah, I'm a Pisces. I'm a uh, Pisces. I was like, yeah, this <laughs> gonna be more, Gemini's the best, nigga. <laughs> That's what they I, really just are. Gemini yeah. rappers, nigga. <laughs> Andre Three Stacks, Kanye. <laughs> But, Fucking uh, Biggie, Tupac, though. Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. greats, though. They yeah, all yeah. considered goats. Yeah, yeah. But basically, like, it was based off of who I was listening to at the time. Like, certain songs were based kind of off of what artists I was listening to at the time. Like, I wasn't thinking, like, oh, I'm finna sound like this person. It just happened up. Like, if people think, like, oh, he sounds like this person, is most said, likely... You cause... said you were, li you were listening to Andre at the time? Oh, nah. No, I was uh, listening to Kanye. Uh, I went, in the process of the project, Kanye, Chef G. Okay. X. Um, I love X. Smino. Smino. Isaiah Rashad. Isaiah Rashad. Uh, who else? Who else? Because that's where I kind of get the, like... Oh, Mac Miller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who else? Who else? Tyler, obviously. I've been listening to Tyler yeah. from... From seventh grade and up, so like from like thirteen all the way till now, I've been listening to Tyler Crater. I yeah, went from I love Tyler Crater. Man, it's one of my favorite artists like ever. What, my, one of my favorite songs, bro, is "And She," bro, like ever. Yeah, and she. she uh, 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 and so we can't can see you uh, in the dark uh, when you sleep sleeping. Naked by the it's weird. Go ahead, it's 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 naked body, <laughs> fresh out the shower, <laughs> then you touch yourself out the hours. <laughs> Crazy though, cause niggas is like, I'm thinking about like back in 2013, 2014. Niggas is like, oh shit, this slap, not knowing this nigga talking about stalking a bitch. No, I like, he literally looking that. out the window, type. I'm looking at you, change type shit, and I'm like, hold on, hold on, this slap. But what the fuck is wrong with you? I feel you on the. Uh, the thing is, that's what got me off about it, cause I was always deep into music, and right when I heard the words, and like, you know, what I mean, like, especially with Ty, just like one. You know, you know, like, yeah, like you know, he's just going five, six, seven. Like, he yeah, is the bullets if you say no after all of it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, 
like, bro, like, like, I love that shit, bro. Like, when Tyler did that shit, that's when rap was missing, because I wanted to be that. And that was right around the time I started fucking doing music, and, like, I was like, bro, I want to be this so bad. I'm, like, so mad that he did, like, this was, this kind of, like, what pushed me to do it. Yeah. And Kanye always made me think, like, oh, yo, it's possible. Because, like, before, when I, bro, when I was rapping, like, even if you was, like, a, uh, like, a, uh, Conscious type rapper, you're still from the hood. I'm yeah. like, nigga, I ain't from the hood, bro. I'm a black, nigga, black Mexican motherfucker in the suburbs, nigga. Like, I know I'm in Stockton, and I kind of know, like, you know what I mean? I'm able to relate and shit, but like, I got family members maybe from the hood and shit, but I'm not from the hood, so I've never thought, like, even Kanye, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. for first, Kanye was the first one who's like, oh, even though I'm in Chicago, you know, my mom's a teacher. I'm for well off. I went fucking spent time in Japan, learned, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what kind of shit I did. So I was just like, oh shit, this is possible. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then Drake was just like, oh, I just rubbed it in my face, nigga. Like, like uh, <laughs> I was a actor. Like, yeah, like, my mom is Jewish. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, I, have, oh, I used my bar miss for money to make it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, uh, fuck it, but Tyler, when he did that, was like the type of like art that I wanted to create. Because yeah. I was like, the shit that I want to do is like old Eminem type shit, but different. But you can't really go that there. controversial, like, and he did, sound. He could, he's like, you can't go there. You just got to do it the right way or come about it. Or you just have some dope ass beats. Because that's why a lot of people fuck with Tyler, bro. A lot of times Tyler, like, Kanye, I, I'm sorry, but like Tyler is like the same, almost like Kanye is like, oh, yeah, you're a dope rapper, but you're not the best rapper. But as an artist or a producer... You're one of the fucking best ever. You know I what feel I'm saying? like I, I I get you on the Tyler one, but I feel like with Kanye. But Kanye don't write all his own shit too, by the way. Drake, a lot of these dudes don't. To be honest, yeah, like yeah, Wayne, yeah. even Wayne. Yeah, yeah, he, Wayne don't, and Wayne's yeah, supposedly yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, the yeah. greatest rapper he of the like, new generation. And he is. No, I'm, kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. just saying, like, no, I'm just kidding. Bro. Like he's he's had great music. I wanted he's you a, to put a name out. He's there. the greatest mixtape maker of all time. Mm. Like I've never met anybody else with a better mixtape discography. I, or my bad, listen to anybody with a better mixtape discography than yeah. Little Wayne. He's the, first one, he's the first one to put rappers on and like, bro, fuck this, bro. He's the, think about it, he's like one of the niggas, at the one time, he had one of the number one albums and shit out, or one of the biggest hip-hop albums out, and he's giving you free music. I was like, I don't want to hear shit from any. He fucked the game up because I'm like, I don't want to hear shit from any other rapper talking about. Oh, it takes months and years and shit. This nigga keeps getting me new shit every fucking week, nigga. So, uh, man, y'all can suck my dick about fucking uh, songs need to be put out in record labels. Lil Weezy's doing it, so and that's what everybody's doing. I mean, like, look at like artists like Russ now. Like he ain't even put. Like, he'll put a project out, but he'll put out a, at one time. He's putting a song out once a month. Just like, hey, bro, here's this song. Here's this song. You know yeah. what I mean? Like. I feel like when it comes to, because I study a lot about the industry, like now, is once you kind of have like a control over how how your stuff works with whatever label you're working with, like for example, Russ is independent partially, like he says he's completely independent, but he's not, he goes through distribution, like he could put, he has the power to put his music out whenever because he works in a partnership, mm -hmm. um, Wheezy, like Wheezy was signed, but it was like, Birdman and him were so like this, that he's like, fuck it. I could put my music out whenever because me and Birdman are like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same shit for X. X was able to put out shit through Empire because Empire worked with him with a partnership. And I just recently watched a documentary and found out it. about yeah, that. Yeah, I need to watch yeah, it. Yeah, he, he basically had a $1.5 million advance. Yeah, I saw that. And Ghazi, who's the CEO of Empire, he was like, well, I have 200000 for you for two songs. Yeah. And X chose the 200000 over the $1.5 million advance. And he was like, I'd rather be in a partnership with somebody than be a slave. And yeah. I felt that because a lot of artists are trying to go the independent route, but they end up taking money because they feel like they can't do it by themselves. Yeah. So, I mean... I fuck with the niggas who could put out shit every week. But do you think that people can do it, like, with their own money? Think about how much money, like, T-Pain said it himself. Unless you ain't put $200,000 uh, behind a song, you ain't gonna make it the biggest song in the world. I feel like with today's type of... With today's social media, you can do it without the 200000 technically. Cause technically. I just watched... But can you get the revenue back from it for, through social media? There was a band I found out about called Caffeinated Air Duo, 
And they made a song that's popping on TikTok right now called Tech It. It's blowing up. Like, it hasn't even went to its fullest potential yet because it's still rising. I was like, damn, I just found out about this song. I'm playing it every day. Like, yeah. every fucking day yeah. on, on Spotify. And it's like, damn, all it took was for me to hear something on TikTok. And I'm like, damn, I want to listen to this every day. Because it's good. It's a good song. So, I feel you, but the only thing is, like, uh, there's people with, like, let's say... I don't know. You are right. I would say you're right, and maybe I'm older and don't know. Cause, there, but there are some acts that I see from uh, TikTok that got a big buzz. You know what I'm saying? And then like, but you see as far as where they're at, like probably financially. And yeah. I'm like, oh damn! It's like okay, you popping, but where's the revenue? Because you got to pay for shit. You know, you got to pay to tour. You got to pay to make videos. You got to pay to keep feeding the oh, monster yeah. to get shit back. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like. How much, what's your net and what's your gross, you know what I mean? So it's just like, that's the only thing I look at it, because when you're putting money behind it, like, think about it, bro, like, fucking Rihanna's umbrella was over a million dollars. Sheesh. Oh, it shit. It wasn't by accident, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the reason why you know that song today, that's why that shit went fucking probably diamond, I don't even gotta look at it and know that it went diamond as a single, you know what I mean? So it's just like... I think the only reason I don't discredit so much of the uh, industry thing is because they can put up that money where an artist doesn't have to, you know, I could probably pay that off in two two albums instead of one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Realistically. And um, that's the only thing I have the objective about. At the same time, but I totally agree with you. Like, I would shoot a motherfucker if they told me when, I, when and when I cannot put my music, <laughs> music out. Yeah, because I, um, I pay attention to a lot of the newer artists. Because I feel like a lot of the older artists were kind of ran through by the industry. So, like, I, I love our our legends in hip-hop, but yeah, it's like they got our, our legends in hip-hop, whether it's Biggie, Pac, whatever it is, like, they kind of got ran through by the industry. Like, the industry controlled what they can and can't do. Like, we live in an era where if we wanted to, it's like, I want an advancement. Like, and we live in an industry where... If you if you doing the numbers, they gonna let you pick what you want anyway. Uh, yeah, like they yeah. gonna throw an offer to you, you could change that. Like yeet. It shows it, it shows uh it shows the numbers. You know? Yeah, like, yeah, bro, like this nigga got a million followers, like bro, like okay, he got the leverage. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? This we got a, we got an idea, maybe if as a million followers, even if we take a third of that, okay, we got three hundred thousand people who are gonna do, say, or watch whatever this motherfucker does. See? So And it's like if we put that into units, 10 times, <laughs> fucking 10 times 300,000, okay, 3 million. All right, let's give this nigga about like a $600,000 advance. And, and that's that, when, we're going to get this 3 million. And, All right, ready, break. <laughs> and that's when, that's when niggas be like, that, that's when they, see, that's what I'm, I'm talking about is like, I'm going to make sure I'm sharp by the time that time come. Like, I don't know when my time's going to come. Lately, I've been feeling like it's going to be soon. I don't know how soon, but I feel like it's it's going to be soon. Like, I gain followers every day. That's what I gain, I've been gaining, like, people noticing my music. I've been getting more fans. I've had people, whether it's guys or females, playing my songs in the background of their stories. So I'm like, it went from me wanting people to pay attention to people just paying attention without me even saying anything. So yeah, it's surprising, huh? Does yeah. it trip you out, bro? It does. Yeah, and does it trip you out? Is there a song that you have out there that people like that you're not even really fucking with? Or like, oh, are you going to be like an artist? Are you going to be like the politically correct artist who goes, I love all my babies and da da I don't give a fuck what anybody says, any artist, any person, anyone who does this shit. There's one thing you put out like, nigga, that shit was trash. It could be a whole project. It could be one song. It could be a fucking, it could just be a verse in a song. You'd be like, damn, I wish I would have never put that verse out. I hate assumptions and vultures. <laughs> those are those are my least favorite songs that I put out that everyone likes. Like, yeah, like yeah. the hood niggas fuck with vultures because it's literally about like living in this city and and kind of like a it's all about the crab in the bucket mentality. Mm -hmm. And then assumptions, I like what I the message behind it, but I just hate the fact that that like out of all the gems that I had, yeah, that's, they're like that's I the, the girls are like I love this it's, one, and, you're like, and it's bro, like I made that shit. That's like the Frank Ocean thing. Like think about Novocaine. Think about all the songs Frank Ocean's made and shit. And he's like the fucking ballads and the thing. This nigga made what stupid ass song for he made it for someone else. Actually, when you go down the rabbit hole of that, and he kept it for himself. He made Novocaine for somebody else. 
else. Yeah, it was. I, that's wow. I, Shout but, out Frank Ocean. But I think he kept it for himself. Like it was a session, and they're like, "Oh, we're trying to do it for this artist. It was getting too difficult with everybody else to do it or whatever." And Frank Ocean's like, "Nigga, I want." From I've what I heard, that. from what I heard from interviews, but I don't know. But either way, that nigga made that shit in twenty minutes, and he's just like, "Nigga, you know." And obviously, I'm not gonna say everybody thinks Nova Kings, but I'm sure everybody thinks that's one of a cool song. Like if I went to a Frank Ocean song concert. Nigga didn't sing Nova Can. I'd be a little upset. Like, well, like, you know, like, come on. Bro. You know, it's funny. That's one of my least favorite, really? like, Frank Ocean songs. I just think it's just so, uh, uh, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Blondie's Blondie, bro. Like, Blondie, yeah. I don't give a fuck what anybody said. Even no matter how much you love Channel Orange, when you fucking. Bro, Blondie is Blondie a, is... is a freaking, yeah, Blondie is just, is just one of the greatest projects ever. Created. Like, it's. One of the greatest it's, things ever. I mean, even I thought, Andre Three Stacks. That was the on first so, time. Man. That was the first time someone came. I mean, no, don't get me wrong, because Kendrick Lamar. But if you look at his discography, then because Frank Ocean takes so much more longer between albums. So yeah. I was, just like, I was like, it actually followed through. Like I was just like, yeah. I don't think he's gonna beat Channel Orange, nigga. I just don't think it's gonna happen. I'm sorry, nigga. I've been. I'm sorry, nigga. I've been alive a lot for a little bit of time. No one fucking succeeds. My expectations when they do some shit like this. This nigga came out with fucking Jabaldi. I was like, he did it, nigga. Like, you know, if you don't count the one before that, but that was a distraction for the record companies. Well, yeah, they, that, I actually watched a video on that too. And this is what made me not, like, it made me feel like as an artist, I can control my narrative and how I, how I do things with the industry. This man, Frank Ocean, had a deal where he had to just drop one more album. He dropped a whatever album. And then drop blonde as soon as he got solo and got his little partnership deal. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, so this is what we're doing. But the industry has more of a lock on that. You can't just do what Frank Ocean did anymore. Yeah, yeah. But. And then also, uh, talking about controlling your narrative and things like that, uh, what's cool is that you're on this podcast right now, bro. You know what I mean? And that's the one thing that, I mean, I'm not going to say I think every rapper or any every entertainer should have a podcast. But if you don't have a podcast, you need to be uh, visiting one, you know, Man. I mean, uh, at least once, twice a year or some shit like that, just to check in with your fans. And it helps other people's community, you know, that they create and build because you get to help create your own narrative. You know what I mean? Like, I tell everybody who does this show, um, uh, it's like, yeah, it's not going to be a big old thing or whatever. It's not going to be. I mean, eventually that's like obviously the goal, you know what I mean? Man. But. <laughs> It's one th the two things that this podcast is for is for one for you to look back in a year from now and be like damn look at what I was on you know what I mean and then see the things you said and see if you came through with them see what happened you know what I mean yeah and so it's more of like a, a reference point you know what I mean because I look back at this shit right every now and then like I don't ever look I mean I edit them so I see them but then after I put it out I never I never view it like you know what I mean I never look at it after I edit it and do that shit. But uh, every now and then I go back, like after a year, I go look at it a year later and be like, damn, look at it. like memories flash, where was I in my life? That's so crazy. And then secondly, it's just for the people that really fuck with you to like have questions answered or to get a feel like, oh, damn, this is who I'm fucking with. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not gonna, it's like not so much as like, Make get you more fans, but the fans that you got or people who fuck with you, yeah. fuck with you that even more because they're like, oh, I get to have the conversation I wanted. I get to, you know what I mean. But I got to have it, motherfuckers. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> you my whole world. This is the first ever podcast I've ever been on too. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy because I think, yeah. For example, I, matter of fact, it probably wasn't even a year ago. It's probably longer than that. I think it was before COVID happened. I wanted to be on this podcast mm -hmm. and like. It's just manifestation. Like I want, I've been wanting to work with Don Quez since I was like 18 years old. That's when I really started paying attention to Stockton's music, and like I saw he was on No Jumper. That's how I found out about him, and I followed him and stuff. He followed me back, and like as I got older, I was I started making shit. Then I got with Ophishoke because of my boy Dan, and he liked the way I made music. So I would I asked him. I was like, let's work on my next project. You can produce it, and he was like, I'm down. And so, Ooh. oh for sure. Oh, oh for sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because oh. I grew up listening to both of them, like yeah, oh for sure yeah, as yeah. a producer, and Alexander Blue as a singer, oh, yeah, and yeah. Um, Don Quest. Like those are my some of my favorite artists out of Stockton. Yeah. And yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me wrong, I fuck with Sloby and all of them. Like they're Ooh. tight, Young Sloby. I don't even know. You don't know who Young Sloby is? No, nigga. It's like the gangster rap scene of Stockton. Like yeah. that's that's more of what. 
is the negative portrayal of Stockton is. That is like drill music type more music? Yes. Yeah, I call it Stockton drill. People get mad when I say that because they think, oh, you can only say that about Chicago and New York. No, but no, nah, yeah. that they're Stockton that's drill for drill, sure, for like, sure. Like, yeah. Type drill type music. They got a specific sound that like Bay Area people say they copied it from the Bay Area, but I think that's it's not. No, it's not. Just, it was I, I like hear it to know. I don't they know. got a sound. That is being copied by the Bay type mm-hmm. shit. Like, they sound is being copied by the Bay. Don't get me wrong. They sound probably did derive from the Bay, but... Because like, it, there's Bay music, and Bay music is not, is not drill music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like... So it's like a kind of... It's like a... Because like you even hear like... Dr- there's like drill music in London. Like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. Just, just like that like, shit's tight. Yeah, you know what that I'm saying? That shit's tight. So it's just like... So uh, is that's what you're talking about? Because yeah, I, I hear rappers doing it's drill kinda music, like, and doing drill music. It's kind of like they all got their signature. Like it started with Slobby and them. They had a, like them and Briss from Sack, R.I.P. Yeah. Briss. But like they got like that, like that ad lib sound, hey, hey. Yeah, and it's yeah. like shit like that. And they they got their own little style. And every you know you did something great when the whole city that tries to rap on that street shit tries to sound like you. Yeah, yeah. Like, I want to get to that level one day where some... Well, I probably won't because I'm very versatile, but I want to get to that level one day where somebody's like, damn, this Ruzi Run It Up song's hella good. Let me let me try to make a Ruzi Run It Up type song. Or I want to be able to look up one day Ruzi Run It Up type beat. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that shit's going to go crazy. And they got that right now. Uh, what what kind of type beats do you be looking up to rap on? Are Honestly, they, I don't. No, they I just, never have you ever, though. Like, you when know, I was younger... Yeah. I used to look up Playboy Cardi type beats. Okay, I was yeah, a big yeah. fan of Playboy Cardi when I was growing up in high school and I first yeah. started making music. Yeah. And I used to look up New York type beats in general. Like mm-hmm. I love Ooh, like that. Nas, Illmatic, still my top in my top five albums like of all time rap wise. Illmatic is dumb as fuck, but I think people sleep on like fucking like Godson and like Stillmatic and shit. Like some of those songs, I'm like, cause that, don't get me wrong, like I'm like, I get you like as overall, like cause I love Illmatic, it's one of yeah. my favorite too. But I'm just saying like. I just think it's just like, damn, we got, uh, every time Nas is brought up, I always got to be like, remember these ones too, because they had some fucking hair. No, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, Nas yeah. in general is. Says Illmatic, and I'm like, bro, if you listen to fucking some of these songs on those, yeah. I think with Nas's situation as an artist, people kind of overlook him because he doesn't make like crazy hits. Yeah. Like, and that's even with our generation, since our generation. Like it's more of talk it's about, so talk about mainstream like crazy. yeah like it's a hit in the street or it's a hit hit for the hip hop bands but like Man. an overall like you know pop hit I like, feel like if you can if you're a rapper and you're talented and you can also make a hit while being talented and staying consistent and conscious or whatever you want to do like you're great you're a goat because like honestly like the whole rap sound. Like, the rap game in general is about making hits. And those who don't try to make hits that make hits, like, are amazing. Like, and that's just my honest opinion who, about that. someone who doesn't try to make hits who makes hits? Like, I personally feel like, like for example, I, I don't really think little baby sits out there and is like, oh, I'm finna go make a hit. Like, he just be hungry. Like, you can really he's tell not, when he... He's make a banger. And every... Then, and then it ends up being a hit. Every feature he's on, he's just like... I'm finna eat this up. And I feel like I sound so much better on a feature than I do my own tracks. And I don't know why. It's something about somebody saying, hey, hop on my shit. Like I'm and this is my mentality. Like I'm I'm not gonna try. Like I'm gonna try, but I'm not gonna make an effort to be better than you, but I know my shit's gonna be the best verse on your song. It, but also it takes less energy for you to get the beat. Less energy for you to come up with the concept. Less, well, yeah. less, less energy for you to come up with the ver- or for the hook. So if you're a, and then now you get fucking uh, some uh, information from their verse. I'm like, bro, you they did all the work. That's why. That's why. <laughs> like, what? Because I, bro, I have the same thing. Like, bro, if you gave me a like feature, I'm like, you got everything figured out. Let watch this. <laughs> well, I kind of, I felt because yeah, the hardest part for me is figure out what we're gonna talk about. Like, like what are we gonna talk about? Well, I felt like that because I'm a like I said, I've song written like I've I wrote songs for people in the past. Like I still write songs for people now. Bro. Like I um my song that's coming out in two weeks was originally written for my brother, mm. and he never recorded it, so I just used the lyrics from that so and made a song. Writing, writing. Yeah, I'd be writing writing. 
Like I originally started writing for a friend of mine who makes music, I'm not gonna say names, but I wrote for that person and later on it just I was like, I'm finna make more music. I'm about to do my own stuff. Yeah. And so I mean like back to what I was saying though, because I kinda just went off topic with the whole beating people at their own game with verses is like, I literally was in the studio with my partners and they're my friends, but this is a competition. So I literally said, let's see who makes the best verse. And I was like, save me for last because the best goes last. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I right, bet. But I, we wrote the shit and I was just like, oh yeah, I heard all their verses. I was still writing mine. It, uh, like, it didn't even take me long. None of us took long to write it. And I was just like, oh yeah. None of y'all fucking with me. Hit the wordplay and all of that, and they all doing it through his face. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not the goal necessarily. It's just one of those mindsets where I'm like, I know I'm going to have the best verse because I just feel like, in my mind, this is I'm my character in my movie. Mm -hmm. This is like, this is my movie. Everyone in here is side characters. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's the oddball. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'd be like, nobody's about to beat me on, on a verse at all. Yeah, 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 that's what's up. Yeah, you gotta have that kind of mentality when you're uh, when you're rapping, just just because it gets the best material out. I mean, I'm a very, from what I hear, especially after this last weekend, man, from my whole my whole support team, I'm a very aggressive person. <laughs> so you know what I mean? Like I think I think I call it my mom mentality. You know, what I, mean? I can be a dick, I can be an asshole. You know what I mean? And I know I have to phrase things the right way. You know what I mean? Yeah. I yell at people. You know what I mean? I, I'm loud because I'm just a loud. You heard me so far. I'm a loud <laughs> person. But uh, I can come off being a dick. Do you ever feel like, do you ever have those problems creating music or working with people or anything like that? Well, not necessarily working with people. I usually get like a little praise. Like mm -hmm. they're like, like people who know me that actually be like, oh, Ruzi's coming to the studio? Like, oh, shit, it's Ruzi. What's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ruzi, hello, raw. Yeah, yeah. Or if somebody's in a studio that doesn't know me, they're like, you don't know who Ruzi is? Like, yeah, this, yeah. And they, that's when they pitch me out. Like, oh, yeah. he's hella raw. Then, 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 then. You got to you gotta check him out. Yeah. So it's kind of like... No, but I'm saying like with your like personality or like just like your, your work ethic, the way you... <laughs> Like, when you're working with Ofa Show, I'm sure you got a hell of mad respect, but I'm just saying, have you ever worked with someone, or, like, whether it was performing, or whether it was creating a song, or where, it like, because it seems like you have a certain type of, like, approach where it could be kind of intimidating or making people feel uncomfortable, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I got, um, <laughs> I got, I worked with somebody Girl, on a song, yeah, and I, uh, uh, <laughs> And they took hella long writing their verse. Yeah, yeah. That's and I I'm finished my verse hella quick. And, would and I was just like, don't ever ask me to come in this fucking studio again. Because I'm not, I'm not fucking, I'm not working on shit. Like, I've been told by family members and friends, like, Ruzi, you're a dick. Like, <laughs> like you're an asshole. Like, and there's yeah. damn near times where they're like, you need a bitch or something? No, like, I'm just, this is me. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be like this when I make it, so you guys might as well get prepared now because yeah. this is how I'm going to still be. be. Yeah, like, yeah. if you're butt, and, you at, and now it's to a point where I used to be cool with working with people and being like, oh, let's, it's good. I, you could come work on this song with me in my studio session, but now it's to a point where it's like, if you want to work with me, you either going to pay me or you're going to, Book the session and I'ma come in there and record. Like yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah. you're not wasting my time no more. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. and if you if you fuck this up, we're never working together again. Yeah, and that's yeah, just yeah. is what it is. Cause you're not yeah. gonna fuck my creative process up. Yeah, bro. Cause it's it's infuriating. Yeah. <laughs> People don't know what you. I don't know what you do in your off time, bro. Or what job you have or what the fuck you do. You know what I mean? I don't know if you got kids. I don't know if you got a girlfriend. You might. Who knows what time you did to sacrifice just to be here today? You know what I mean? And I appreciate you. <laughs> I appreciate you just inviting me here. Yeah. You feel me? Like yeah. I. Um, but, oh, but before you go, but yeah. what I'm saying is just like that's what you have to approach. Like I didn't get that either. I was that fuck at one time. You know what I mean? But I didn't know. But once I knew, I was just like, oh, because I didn't know what the landscape is and how people make songs and shit yeah. but once i started getting pretty good at making songs especially a verse 
Like, nigga, that shit needs to be done and ready, nigga, because then, like, especially if you got all the equipment and everything and shit, like, nigga, 30 minutes, like, give me 30 minutes, nigga, like, we can go in there and finish this, bang this out real Man. quick, like, you know I mean? I can come in, listen to the song for a little bit, kick with you, smoke, drink, nigga, but, you know, sometimes niggas be in there four hours and we don't and even have a verse done. That's money, like, <laughs> especially, because I'm, I, I barely just got a financer in my, on my team, so it's more of, like, I spent a lot. I sp- I used to spend a lot of money like going to the studio. Like I still like even now since I'm really really working, just buying leasing beats or paying for them or whatever. Like so, uh, now I'm getting beats sent to me. I'm not gonna lie. Like I I be getting beats sent to me from niggas from Lithuania, Germany, like weird? Africa. Yeah, nah, it's not weird. It's just. Well, I'm not saying weird like in like unusual. I'm saying like damn, like I didn't think no one nigga from Lithuania would send me a beat. Nigga. Well, I I would say me, probably like four years ago would be like damn, mm-hmm. I never would have thought this would happen. But me now is just like, this is expecting is gonna keep going higher. Yeah. Next is gonna be a list rappers. Next mm-hmm. is gonna be a list producers. Like I um. I just feel like as long as you pursue shit, you meet the right people, you make sure your shit is good around the right people, like you'll you that's the formula for success in anything you want to do in life. Like it's just perseverance and knowing the right people. Like if you don't know the right people, then you're fucked. Like yeah. it's it's just it is what it is. So who else is the right people for you? Uh right now, like I just work with people to be honest. Like I pay, like if I gotta get a feature out, I'm paying for that. Like this one is more of just a personal bucket list. Like I said, I'm going to be working with Don Quez on a song. Yeah, yeah. So I'm kind of putting the money towards that feature right now. And that's not just something I always wanted to do. That's also business-wise a big feature. Yeah. This is a man who's like been in the same studio as Guap Dad 4000. And yeah. like Duke University has played the man's music like in a little advertisement type shit. So. Yeah. I mean, I think he's even worked under Empire at one point. His music yeah. being on Thizzler. So it's like, yeah, yeah. that's pretty big to me. Yeah, so, yeah. and then um, my boy, Dan, like we liked Dan. He works with like people from all over. And like there's people that represent Nigeria. He's working with them. He's He was just in the studio with Guap Dad. What are you? Are you like a specific type of, because I'm just black. I don't know what <laughs> tribe I'm at. Like, I'm Haitian. Okay. You're Haitian. I'm Haitian. I don't know what my, my mom's side is, but I know my gra- my dad's side, like my grandfather was Haitian. Okay. He was Haitian and Cherokee, like uh, Native American. Uh, so I just say I'm, I'm American, to be honest. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. Yeah. That's something that I feel like people try to give us a category, but in reality, you're born in America. You're just American, bro. Yeah. Like, if you're born in America, that's how I feel. Especially you grow through all the uh, like schoolings and all that shit. You know? Exactly. You're pretty much just American. I mean, I I definitely identify with race, but to a degree, like, cause yeah, I realize like I ain't African. <laughs> like, I'm personally, you know what I mean? I don't yeah. Have, my dad's. I'm like a Mexican mom. You know what I mean? You know, it's different, but. But what were we talking about? We were, <laughs> like, we're, talking, about we're talking about like uh, meeting the right people, basically. Right people. There you go. So yeah, we're talking about Dan. So my boy Dan, De Niro Dan, he uh, he just be out out there a lot. Like he kind of got the jump start before me. Like just start going out there. He has a great team right now. He uh, he's on a lot of the tracks on that project. Oh, bro, De Niro Dan. Yeah, bro, I've been bro, knowing that. Bro. I've been knowing that man yeah. since seventh grade. He's Shout out De Niro pop- Dan. He's been popping up on my radar recently, maybe because of you, or so well, or maybe Kenzo or somebody. I don't know. Probably because of Kenzo. He's yeah. been doing a lot of stuff with Kenzo lately. Shout out Kenzo, by the way, bro. I was at that Oakland game, nigga. Like, yeah, <laughs> that man. I met him recently too. I was like, matter of fact. Kenzo, yo, next shit, I got to be on there, dog. Nah. I'm not playing. <laughs> but, nah, I met him. He has so, like, such a great energy. He's just so positive and lit everywhere he go. Like, it's like, no matter what, it doesn't matter if the crowd doesn't know him. He doesn't give a fuck. It's Kenzo's crazy. just like, uh, crazy. uh, uh. Yeah, that energy crazy, man. Man. Yeah, energy crazy, man. <laughs> it's and that's like a that to me is important when you're an artist. Like you have to just carry yourself a certain way, or like every artist has a character, and you just have to be that character. That role, yeah. Hell yeah. Literally. All right, bro. Well, we already got uh, 
about 50 minutes, bro. So Sheesh. Like, yeah, have you felt like it's 50 minutes? I haven't. But, yeah, 10, 15 minutes, huh? Seems like it's not that long. But uh, go ahead and just, uh, you don't have to end it right now, but I'm just saying, like, what's some things we have to look forward from you, bro? Well, I got a lot of music videos coming out this year. Oh, that's what yeah. we bro. I haven't even dropped one. <laughs> Bro, that was the one question I was like, yeah, bro, because I was looking through your shit like, this nigga ain't got no music videos, bro. Like, I got, this nigga got more songs than I got fucking songs. Oh, or not really, but close to it. And I'm like, but not one video, nigga? Like, and then nah. like, I was looking to be like, I was going to try to build it up and be like, yeah, so visuals are very important. Key. Hey, man, why you ain't got no goddamn visuals? You know what? I just couldn't find somebody that was going to bring my vision to to life so i recently just found a videographer who's gonna bring my vision to life plus i have a video director i'll be collaborating with like a part of my team so you're now. trying to make like those like like cinematic yep. yeah that's what i'm about to say you're trying to make like a storyline you got yep. plot and shit you yep. ain't just fucking popping champagne with bitches shaking ass and your shit yep I'm yeah. not doing that. Yeah, no, me either. I never... I mean, I do want to do it one time. Because I got this song called Shake Your Ass All Day. Like, it's called All Day. And it's like, she can shake her ass all day. I'm fucking shot it in a long way. But that one, I want... Ass, but it's going to be, like, funny. Like, I like funny. You know what I mean? What about you? What are things that like, spark your interest? I, what, what kind of direction or lane do you look forward to get into? I kind of be on some, like, more of, like... Serial killer type shit or split personality right, well, type shit. Interview, bro. No, I, was gonna, I, was gonna, I was like, oh that, shit. That. I was like, oh shit. All right, all right. That, that <laughs> nah, it's like um, I have like a, a video I want to do soon where it's just gonna go crazy. Like it's just a it's a story. Like most of my shit involves females. I'm gonna get a female character and mm -hmm. and just do my thing. I actually got a song I'm working on right now, produced by Official called Casper. It's gonna have Alexander Blue on the track. So, do you have any like uh, hesitation uh, going moving in that direction and putting yourself in that light? Because I have a song that's called She's Gone, right? And I didn't think it was gonna be a big deal, but at the end of it, I kill myself. And I don't really, it's a joke. I even try to make it a joke at the end, like at the end of the video, <laughs> let it black out for a little while, and I come back, I'm alive. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, everybody's okay, because I know I can trigger people, you know? What I mean? Yeah. Still, it was a big deal. I was just like, oh, damn, there was still a few people who reached out, you know, wanted to talk about suicide with me, you know what I mean? <laughs> And uh, and not saying like you know we shouldn't or whatever, but anyway, I was just saying like oh shit, like you're gonna be perceived a certain way. I don't give a fuck. I can give a fuck how I'm perceived. Um, that's just my personality. I do want to. The thing is, because I know what uh, certain things emotion emotions I can evoke. I know I can trigger people, but at the same time, I'm not really tripping. But do I want to not deal with so much the consequence, but do I want to the interactions? Like, you know what I mean? Like, even if it's just 10 reactions of people just hitting you up and being like, hey, man, what you did there, like, we, you know what I mean? And there's people that you fuck with, so you got to talk to them. You're not going to be just like, hey, man, fuck you, get off my back. You're going to be like, oh, well, we got to have this well, discussion and talk because they want to know where I came from. Uh, do you ever, like, worry or have any hesitation of being perceived with any? I don't know how your movie is. I'm just saying, like, there well, has nope. to be some things that, no? Not at all. It literally says in the bio, the oddball, anybody that knows me knows I'm an odd character, mm -hmm. like just in general. Like I'm very strange, like personality-wise, music-wise, it's completely different from what you normally hear in the city. And everything I do is just strange. So it's yeah. like, if you don't get the picture like I'm the fucking oddball... Like, I don't know what to tell you. That sounds yeah. like it's going to be your problem. But your music's not so much oddball, though. Would you say? I'm, make, I'm making a song about going ghost on a chick. So literally. That's, that's why it's called Casper. Okay. And, like, most of that, like, for that one, it's going to be, like, different. As in, like, a girl is chasing me, trying to kill me type shit. Uh, like, I'm also going to be making more suicide awareness type music okay. where I actually do kill myself mm -hmm. in a video. And... Personally, it's like up to the people for interpretation. Like, I shouldn't even explain like yeah, how the music video is gonna uh, be. No, don't, but, don't, 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 don't. but I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. Like yeah. we're made, like we're artists. We made to just do what the fuck we want to do, and yeah. it's not up to people to determine like if we're good or not. Or we, what it is, yeah, man. like I feel like if you're an artist and you go and put music out and people care about, like, and you care about what people are going to say, then you already fucked up as an artist. Just make your shit and call it a day. If you like the shit, that's all that yeah, matters. exactly, yeah. And I love my shit, so. 
<laughs> yeah, that video, I mean, even though there were some things or whatever with it with me, I was just like, bro, I thought it was a great idea. It was cool. It was some of the best. Everyone saw, liked the song of the video. It's just like, even if they liked it, they still would just like want to talk about suicide and shit with me. And I'm like, nigga, take that, that think about that shit yourself, nigga. Like, <laughs> I don't think I have thoughts about that shit too, nigga. Like, what the fuck, bro? Just enjoy it for what it is, bro. Move on, nigga. Like, you know what I mean? But do you ever Man. have any, like, quorums with you and yourself or with other people? Like, maybe even your family? Like, there's a long time with my dad where I just had to hang and be like, hey, man. Stop following me then. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to do what I want to do. Eventually, at a point, like, I ain't worried about, you know what I mean? That was younger. I mean, I'm 30. I'm 30. You know what I mean? So I'm saying, like, this is like eight years ago when I'm telling this nigga this shit, you know, when I'm 21 or some shit. Well, I kind of gave myself the name The Oddball for a reason because when I first started making music, I got laughed at. Mm -hmm. Like, it was like, what the fuck is this? Like, type shit. Yeah. And then as I kept going, though, that's when people was like, okay, he's getting better. And then now it's to the point where it's like, Oh shit! Like you're gonna make it. Like yeah. that is is that just is what it is. I've never heard anyone give me a bad insult about anything. You got like, good music, bro. Yeah. Like I said, so, like when I saw when I heard you when you first started making it, even though I could tell you weren't a performer, even though tell you're young or whatever. I yeah. Said, I heard the music. I'm like, hey, that's no song. Like, <laughs> I made that. I made that when I was 17 years old. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. saying. And like when I heard it, I'm like, oh shit! You know what I mean? Because I thought maybe you'd have like this crazy like. Overdubbed bass banger, you know what I mean? Something random. I'm like, oh, this shit got, you know, this shit got groove, like, you know what I mean? So I was just like, oh, you know what I mean? So, yeah, bro, you got good music, bro. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, I, literally, I just feel like if I can't make what I want to make because somebody says something about me, well, fuck you. Yeah, I don't even yeah. believe in cancel culture. I feel like yeah. you just ignored cancel culture. Like, fuck them. Yeah. Like, they don't determine you're really your... doing something crazy. I don't think I'd ever do something hella, yeah, hella yeah, crazy. Yeah. But if that's... I say something yeah. that's on my mind that ain't like, I feel like isn't correct. wrong, yeah, yeah. like, I'm never going to try to be a political, p politically correct person because I'm, I'm, I was designed on earth to be able to speak my mind on my own individual and nobody's going to stop me from speaking my mind. Yeah, and living like that is fucking boring, bro. Like, what the fuck? I say shit like that all the time, but I, I take it too far sometimes. Like, so that's why I'm like, I should watch what I say sometimes. Bro. I'm unfiltered. I've I've heard I'm very unfiltered, and I still, like I said, if you guys are listening, I still don't give a fuck. Yeah, for sure, bro. All right, well, anything else you want to leave with the people, bro? I think we had a, you think we had a good one? Yeah, yeah. we did. <laughs> we did. Was it was good. I appreciate you, bro. Don't yeah. forget to slap Oni is coming out six actually mm, yeah. Six at seventeen. June well June seventeenth. I'm being a dummy right now. But Oni coming out on the seventeenth of okay. June. Slap that shit. Hell yeah, bro. Hey, yes, sir. Else? I bought out. Shout out to Armin Wall. Oh, bro. Hell yeah, bro. And on that note, <laughs> blow! <laughs> Thanks for having me. Hell yeah, bro. Thanks for coming through, bro. That shit was cool. I ain't never did some shit like that. Yeah, bro, you good.